Hey guys, this is Just Incredible, and you're watching Pro Wrestling 101. Today we're here in Deer Park, New York, with a good friend of mine, Matt Stryker. Matt, school these young men and women. Uh, I don't know if you've watched, but you know, with the Pro Wrestling 101 series, we get you know friends and quite honestly aficionados of this business. Um, and uh, yes, I find you uh, definitely are one of those guys, and and from my generation. And uh, just kind of let the fans know. Uh, you know what's going on with you and really uh, you know what you could bring to uh, 101 in your your discussion today um, I've watched these things. I think they're great I think it's about time that someone can help others. There's no handbook and there's really no I am actually working on an app That's gonna help people to go through spots in psychology, but there's no blueprint and that's the beauty of our business But I learned something and it came up tonight in a match that I had that I think everyone might be able to get some benefit out of if you're a student or you're just learning or even if you've maybe been around for a little while. I was taught that there's a tic-tac-toe board in the ring in my mind. So there's nine squares. Anytime my opponent isn't on one of those nine squares in my mind or if I'm not, technically I'm out of place or he's out of place. So I noticed tonight my opponent wasn't on one of those nine squares. So I just turned my body a little bit which forced him to turn and guess where he ended up? on one of those nine squares and the puzzle began to present itself back to the flow of the match that I wanted. So those are little things you can do from a strategy point of view in wrestling, in sports, even in a street fight. You want to turn a guy because the fire hydrant's right there and you want to kick his face into the fire hydrant, turn onto one of those imaginary nine squares and you'll never get lost. And it's also like Saturday Night Fever, but that's just for me. You know, I, I appreciate what you're saying, and, and what a lot of fans don't understand, I mean, people, you know, you're very cerebral, and this business is very cerebral. I don't think people sometimes give us the credit for what we, honestly, what we put into a match and how much we think about what goes into the match. And it's really hard, and I mentioned this in a lot of the one-on-ones before, what we do on the independent level could be very rewarding, but very frustrating. I mean, you know, we risk the chances of being hurt, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of places you go, let's face it, guys, it's backyard wrestling, glorified. And uh, what do, what Especially when I'm on the card. <laughs> what what do you like to do? I mean, you know, nothing particular, but when you come to a place where you've never been before, how do you like to present yourself, to get yourself I, I wouldn't say I'd say get the most out of your interaction with the fans and protect yourself from guys you don't necessarily know. It's a great question. Wow. <laughs> um, no, but it, it's, it's an awesome because it's a psychology. But I come to shows almost feeling like I have this bag with me over my shoulder. And in it are things I've learned over the years from guys like, you know, Arn Anderson, Fit Finley, William Regal, Dean Malenko, Triple H, Ric Flair, Edge, Tommy Dreamer. Oh, my God. I have all these things. And I, I, uh, <laughs> I put it down in the middle of the locker room and I open it up. And who wants what? That's my first thought. So, oh, I have a match with this guy. Let me see what I can do here. Let me see what maybe I can do to help him. And what gift can I leave? Because, and I might leave with a gift too. I, I, it's a tough answer because I really haven't figured that part out yet. And I scratched my head like a monkey. But, um, I don't know. I think just for, for the people. What can I do that's best for the people, you know? That's a crappy answer, but no, it's it's not. Look, it, this is, it's about having an honest discussion, and, and quite honestly, you know, it's it's what I like to do, and I'll kind of throw my information into the into the ring or hat into the ring, whatever. Is uh, you know. I, I'm not looking to get hurt at 39 years of age. Being in this business, being knocked around and uh, being abused, uh, I, I don't want to get hurt. But I also, I do. I want to entertain fans, and I want to. I, I have a little. You know, you don't have a. You don't have as much to prove, because you were very successful at what you did. See, I was a class A screw up. And uh, for a long time, this I was a mutual beneficial society here, but uh, you don't have anything to prove either. And I'm not just saying it because it's your show. Yeah, you t everyone's got demons, but that's even more of a reason to say, you know what? You got nothing to effing prove. You're back. Very true, very true. But what I like to do basically is just kind of uh, go out there, not get hurt. And that, and that talks to a lot of younger guys. Listen, not that you have to take it easy and handle us with kid gloves, but you want to go out there and get the most out of me. You know, like tonight, uh, we uh, you know we did we did something actually together where we worked with one another uh, against uh, two younger guys. And uh, you know, when uh, when I was able to to give and commit to these guys, I have a better match. 
you know, and uh, tonight I, I got into a situation where I was thinking way too much, didn't give them, you know, I wasn't being just incredible because I was too busy thinking of spot fests because we had actually two matches back to back. So what I like to do, quite honestly, is just go out there, have fun, and, and you know, kind of integrate the fans with the experience. That's what I, I, I like to bring. So let's close it. How are you feeling kind of like, you know, with your new newfound thing, venture and journey into the indies today? Because the indies are different than it was 2000. 2005, 2006. Um, kind of give us where you're going and what you're, what we have to look forward to from you, because I know you got some great stuff. I, I kind of get off on knowing that. Oh, I showed that guy that. Oh, oh, cool. That move I saw Marty Jones do on World of Sport. I showed that guy that. Oh, look, he's doing that. I want to leave something. My ego was broken a long time ago, so it's really not about me. What moves am I going to do? I just want to leave the show that I'm at with the guys going, "Wow, that was awesome. I learned from him." And uh, that's it, man. I like wrestling. That's you know, you've, you, 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 me too, and I think it rings true with a lot of guys uh, that have been here in it as long as we have. They're still doing it at this level. It's not just about a quick paycheck for me, at least now, not now. It I'm doing now. right, exactly. <laughs> I, I'm doing this because I love it, Matt. It's a real honor and a pleasure to have you. This is one of the good guys in this business. There's not very many of them. He certainly is, and we thank you for being here. That's Pro Wrestling 101, and I'm just incredible. And this is Matt Strike.